Hey guys, Laura Reich here, and today we are going to talk about the 10 things I make sure I do every single month, if not every single day, to grow my online presence. So, I, for those of you who are just joining me and don't know who I am, I am Laura Reich and I own Envision Advertising. I am a social media manager, a graphic designer, and a virtual assistant. And so what that means for you is I actually help solopreneurs find themselves and their strategies in the online world to make sure that their online marketing works for them on a budget. So without further ado, the 10 top things that I make sure I do every single month that I feel is extremely important when it comes to my social media strategy. So number one, I have my list here, so we'll go through them all together, but number one, everybody knows I love Pinterest. So my number one to do that I do every single month is I participate in Pinterest groups I'm almost daily. Um, I make sure that I have my relevant content going to those Facebook groups. If it's an Instagram Facebook group, I'm not going to post a Facebook blog that I did. I'm going to make sure that I'm actually relevant. But I do that every single day. Every day. Um, it definitely helps grow the following that I have, the traffic that I have, and just overall people figuring out who I am and why they should care. Um, the number two thing that I do is I will re research relevant hashtags. I wrote a blog post on this um, on my website, a couple of different um, websites and programs that I personally use to find the best hashtags for my business that are relevant to who I want to connect with and relate to. Um, so you can go and check out there how to do that. But I will make sure that I update that list. I use Evernote um, and I keep a list of different hashtags that I find are working the best for me um, or that have the most traction with other people that I want to connect with. Um, and so I will keep that list in Evernote and then every single month I'll go back to that list and make sure that I'm double checking, you know, are these the hashtags that are still being used? Did I change my goal for my business for this month? Do I need to be reaching out to a different crowd? Um, did something change in my strategy where I need to make sure that these hashtags are still going to reach the intended audience that I want for that strategy? So I will go and research relevant hashtags every single month, make sure that I'm still up to date, cha make changes. Um, I mean, social media is changing every single day, so just keep up with that on the hashtags. The third thing that I do is I create catchy graphics. Um, I've talked about this many times before. You can't just go on Google and grab a graphic that you think looks awesome and then use it for your own strategies. You need to make your own graphics. And so I make graphics that are just quotes with my branded images um, and colors, or I will be completely off the wall one day and feeling like I'm in a weird mood and take a couple pictures of a selfie of me or whatever I'm working on um, and then use those over and over and repurpose them for different things as well. So creating catchy graphics would be the third one that I would say I do every single month. Um, I don't generally create a graphic for every single day. So if I'm thinking about this in terms of the month, there's 30 days in the month, I will maybe make 10 graphics and then you have, you know, two to three for each week that you can post. So it doesn't have to be hours upon hours of your time. You can do this spread out or you can do it, you know, one day in the beginning of the month and have it content for the rest of the month. Um, the fourth thing is I have learned to live stream like a lady boss. Thanks to um, some of the supporters that I've had along the way with my business, I have really gotten into the mode of live streaming and not only live streaming, but repurposing those live streams. My team and I have come up with an amazing structure to be able to take my live streams and post them on five different platforms throughout the month in different ways so that it's not the same content but it's repurposing and it's making it relevant again. So figure out your um, schedule and your niche and go with it with your live streams. Um, 
people are going to start to relate to you. It's crazy how many doors have been opened since I started live streaming. So I will make sure I get on a schedule and I live stream like a lady boss. Um, number five is participate in Facebook groups. I recently made a calendar. Um, it's a Google calendar that is just downloaded off my website. And it has a number of different Facebook groups each day to participate in. Now, when I say participate in Facebook groups, I don't mean be one of those people that just stroll through and then post your promos on promo days. I mean go in there and provide value. There are certain groups that do live stream days. There are certain groups that um, say, you know, just post your content days like your blog or um, if you're drunk something go in there and start a conversation and provide value it's crazy the amount of people that I have connected with in different Facebook groups that I never knew even existed until I started looking for them um, you can use the search bar in the top of your Facebook and start typing in different types of groups or relevant people that you want to connect with um, I started connecting more with mompreneurs since I am expecting our second um, and so I found a lot of Facebook groups for mompreneurs and it's been really fun to connect with them and talk about struggles they've had, um, struggles I've had, different things and just get on a different level um, with them through those groups. So go in and post polls, um, post quotes. If you're struggling that day, let them know, be vulnerable, ask for help and feedback. Everybody has those days. Nobody's gonna be offended or upset at the fact that you're helping them, but all of a sudden you're having a bad day. Nobody's perfect. They're not gonna care. They're gonna see the realistic side of you. So be sure to participate all the time in Facebook groups. Seriously, it is amazing how many connections and growth you can see come from Facebook groups. So that is tip number five. Tip number six is schedule out my social media. I am not superwoman. <laughs> I cannot be on social media every single day for myself. I mean, yes, I am on social media every single day because I have clients to manage, but that does not mean that I have four hours to spend to think of posts for Facebook and then go to Twitter and think of posts for Twitter. And not only that, but then go back and answer questions and comment on other people's stuff and be relevant and real and active on those social media platforms. I don't have time for that. Nobody does. Um, so schedule out my social stuff so that I can then say, okay, I just took two hours and I scheduled out two weeks of my social media content. Now I can make sure that I have a half hour every morning or every evening or whenever you want to hop back on and respond to people and go in and start conversations and actually be social on social media. So if I schedule my stuff, then I know I can actually use social media for its intended use, which is building relationships and being social. So I schedule my stuff. Personally, I use um, Schedulegram and I use Sendable and um, Grum and things like that for all my social media accounts. There are free ones out there. You can use Buffer, you can use Hootsuite. Um, if you guys have any questions on what platform would be best for you, type it in the comments below and I'd love to give you my two cents. Um, I've worked with both Hootsuite and Buffer. Um, personally now, because I manage people's accounts, I prefer to work on Sendable, um, just for reporting and analytical data, but um, there's CoSchedule and Buffer, and I mean, there's all these different platforms you guys can find. So take the time to schedule your social media posts. Then go back and make sure you have it scheduled out, like Mondays, you know you have from noon to one to go back in there and actually be active online. And then, you know, maybe Tuesdays it's 4 o'clock. Maybe Wednesdays it's 8 o'clock in the morning. It doesn't matter. Just make sure you set that time aside so that you know you're being social every single day. So that's number six. Number seven is my favorite. Um, share other people's content. If you relate to it and you feel like it's amazing content and it's helped you through something or it's providing value, then share it. Go ahead and say, you know what, I found this, this is awesome. 
I was struggling with X, Y, and Z and it got me through. That's awesome. That's showing people that you're taking time to read what they're sharing, you care about what they're saying, and you're sharing it with other people. It's just, it's valuable. It's, again, building those relationships. It's showing that you are actually paying attention and you're not just shoving your own content down other people's throats. Um, and it's just, it's a great way to show people that you care. So make sure that you're not sharing blindly. Make sure that you're reading what you are sharing so that you don't get caught up in something. Um, but go through it and the people that you relate to start sharing their stuff and start saying, hey, you know, I really resonated with this today. I would love to share it. If you feel like you need to ask permission to share it, go ahead and ask permission. I don't know anybody that's going to say, no, you can't share my blog. I mean, that's why they put it online in the first place, right? <laughs> so, but absolutely go out and share people's content and share the wealth of knowledge that you're learning from somebody else. Um, so that's number seven. Number eight is thank someone. Take time when you see that someone actually read your comments or they read your blog post or they shared your content. Go back and say thank you. Go back and acknowledge the fact that you see them taking the time to engage with you, taking the time to actually read what you're posting and thank them for it. Time is precious. People don't have all the time in the world to sit and read all these articles, but if they mm -hmm. feel like it's providing value or taking away their pain or helping them in some way, they're gonna read it and they're going to comment and they're going to share. So let them know that you appreciate that. It's just, it's good value to share other people's content and also then to use your manners and say thank you. I mean, that's how I was raised. You say thank you when you appreciate something. And I definitely appreciate when people are reading my stuff, they're commenting with me, they're engaging with me, even if it's just a, hey, Laura, I was thinking about you today. You know what? Awesome. I really appreciate that. Thank you. How can I help you? Like, is there something that you're working through? Maybe somebody's struggling. I had someone message me the other day and they didn't quite know where they were at in their business, which is fine. I didn't, I mean, that wasn't even where we were going with that conversation. But she said, you know, I need to put off this conversation and talk to you in a few days. And I said, why? I said, is everything okay? And that just opened up a whole door for them to go in and talk about some of these personal things that you know what nobody had listened to them that day nobody had said how can I help you um thanks for opening up to me you know how can we get you through this time be a human being say thank you use your manners connect with people, ask them if you can help them, even if it's not for business, even if they're having a bad day and they just need someone to comment and say, I'm here for you, I'm thinking about you, do it. It makes a world of difference. Even though it's online, it doesn't matter. They will appreciate it. So thank someone. Um, that was number eight. Two more. We got number nine is, I know we talked about live streaming like a lady boss. There are also other ways to do visual content, and my favorite for number nine is every month I make sure I do video tips or video trainings. They don't have to be live, but I do record them on my computer, and then I post them on Facebook for people to see. So make sure you're doing video content, whether that is live video content, whether that is recorded video content, whether that's webinars, however you want it to be do some videos, whether that's once a month. I mean, just take a video. I know there's a lot of people out there that do video tip Tuesdays. I mean, that's a perfect time to give somebody a tip that you may have learned last week or over the weekend or on Monday or whatever and just record it on your computer. You don't have to go and do it live. If you don't feel like you want your face on Facebook Live, then record the video on your computer. Do a screen share. Do... um. Zoom, I know Zoom is free and you can record your screen on your computer. 
Um, I personally use Snagit. It's a TechSmith application. So if I wanted to record my, va my face or if I wanted to record my screen, I can do either or. So if you're someone who's not comfortable doing Facebook Live and you just can't get into that right now because you don't want your face to be shown, figure out a creative way to share your screen. Whether that's slides, whether that's showing them a tip, whether that's taking maybe a video of like if you're a beauty product, maybe you're doing a makeover on someone and you don't want to show your face, but you have consent to show the face of the person that you're putting makeup on. Do that. Have video content every single month. Video is huge on Facebook right now. I can't stress that enough. Um, so I make sure I have video tips and training aside from my Facebook lives every single month. Now, the last one that I have for you guys for tip number 10 on 10 things I do every single month to make sure I'm growing my social media presence is I put a small budget. Um, I don't have a large budget for ads, but I put a small budget into advertising online. And typically what that involves is whether I have a webinar coming up or whether I have an awesome blog that I really think people would relate to, um, I will put an ad to it and kind of give it that extra boost that it needs to be seen. So those are my 10 tips. I'll run through them one more quick time. Participate in Pinterest group boards, research relevant hashtags, create catchy graphics, live stream like a lady boss, participate in Facebook groups, schedule social media so that I can be social in real time, share other people's content, thank someone for sharing your content or just for being present with you, um, video tips and training, make sure you have video content monthly, and put a small budget to ads, whether that's $5 a month or whether that's $50 a month, just put a little bit to ads in some strategic way. If you guys have any questions or would like to talk further about other ways that you may be able to grow your social media presence monthly, definitely type it in the comments below and I would love to discuss with you guys. Thanks.